Bird here today I'm going to show you uh, how to kind of set up um, an airline on Airway Sim and how to really effectively do a good startup from the beginning to the to like the first day in terms of the clock starts ticking. So I'll be taking you through you know 15 steps really that I tend to follow um, to kind of make sure that you know I have a good start from the beginning of the game. So there's 15 points that you need to take into consideration. So um, the good day is that today a new game world has started, so I'll be taking you through it. So it's always good to start from the beginning, uh, purely because the game world, all the demand is there, nothing has been supplied, so you tend to have loads of good load factors on your planes, and you tend to make more money so you can accelerate growth, and there's also planes available on the used market, so quickly you can see that there's a benefit to being at the beginning from a game rather than joining later in the game. So to get started, you I'm going to go through play now and I will select the game. Now, if you start normally with say join game, uh, I just restarted before the game started for the purpose of this video, so now it just tells me continue game. So I'll click on continue game. And I, because I've been playing this for many years, so people will have recognized my airline name is Galaxy Express, so I've played this game for nearly 10 years now. Um, call me a veteran of the game so the game has changed throughout the years but I want to just take you through what I go through from a starting perspective so I will start with advanced start and I will type in my airline name as I mentioned Galaxy Express um, three letter code um, I don't pay particular attention to this as long as it's available nobody else has taken it and it keeps scrolling down. Yes, yes, yes. We're not finding any trademarks. We're not making any issues there. So this is the first and important step is finding an airport. So when you run an airline game, this game can be quite intensive in the amount of time it will take you and how busy it will be. Um, if you have lots of time, then by all means choose like one of the top airports and ones that needs a lot of attention. Once you're going to keep you you know, entertain for a long time, but also it's going to keep you busy. Where you're going to have lots of competition. Um, also, you need to take into consideration, like, what kind of airline do you want to run? Do you want to run an airline with loads of wide bodies, long haul planes, or do you want to run, you know, a domestic carrier with, you know, shorter hops and things like that? So clearly, you need to find which airport you want to, to fly. And different airports have different profiles in terms of, you know, where the demand will be. So what I'm going to do is, I want to start with. Uh, mainly long haul base, so wide bodies. So what I'm going to go for today is uh, New York uh, JFK. Uh, I've not done this base before, uh, so you know there's different ways of finding the airport. Uh, I just go for search because I know the code. Type it in, and there it is. So there's already four airlines based there. Um, infrastructure level and traffic levels this kind of just tells me how far the, the airport has developed so far um, this grows over time as as and when you know the busier the amount of slots are the more people fly into this this will go up um, and also determines the cost of the slots and when slots get released um, so I'll click on tick and eventually it'll get there come on go it gives you a bit of overview it's only 25 departs per hour I expect this will increase and these are the competitors that are there already so nobody's flying anything yet because it's the first day but here comes to the the next important step really what you got to look in step two is check your demand levels so it's early on it's very important to check the demand level because there's an element called uh, root image and your root image is important because it will tell you how much demand will get allocated to your routes initially so as your root image will be low as you start off you want to make sure that you start flying to the biggest demand airport so as you can see here Heathrow and LA are my biggest demands uh, from a daily passenger perspective this will increase in the first few weeks of the game, first few months actually, and as it goes, you you will see all the routes will go higher and higher in demand. Um, there's quite a few uh, 
international destinations as you can see here so I've decided to go for a long haul my first route will clearly be London Heathrow um, and possibly also London Gatwick and I will spread some of the routes out uh, which I'll explain later so with this in mind I've already kind of gone on to step number three is because I'm seeing the route profiled where the demand is I'm already thinking of ahead of what my kind of fleet will be this is very important because the more fleets you have fleet types it is you know if you have more than three you'll end up going bust so trust me on that so stick to two fleet types if you can maybe a third when you're transitioning but uh, ultimately do not go above three types unless it's early in the game when you're quite relatively small and you have a transition plan to quickly downsize that would be the only exception where i'd say you can go over three um but typically yeah rule of thumb is stick below three because commonality cost in this game will kill you um so we'll go ahead and we'll we'll confirm that you know um we've chosen you know here see you there's already several airlines here it comes with a warning yes i'm sure i know what i'm doing um it's giving me some money to start so we got 50 million to start um this is quite late in the in the era this is in 2015 this game starts so earlier in the game when you start you know in the jet age era you'll be lucky to get a few million um but then the aircraft will be cheaper as well so now it comes to the important part is to check um your fleet planning so what you got to do is check what aircrafts are available on the used market so what i mean by that is you go to aircraft used aircraft and it does a call automatically for you the first time you do it now i want to fly long haul so i'm going to filter the aircraft available above three and a half thousand nautical miles and i can quickly see here is a300s a310s a330 a340 those are all in the same fleet type and there's quite a lot of them so my preference was probably going to be for the a330 340 but another thing that you need to do is is actually go on the aircraft information page because you want to see what aircrafts are also in storage so you can see the a330 they still got quite a lot of aircraft in storage that need to get released so these will eventually become available on the used market other long haul types you could consider could be the 767 there's quite a few of them and the 777 which will generally be a bit more expensive and there's not that many on there the 787s at this time they will be super expensive to lease so you've got to take into consideration some of the lease costs as well so I would have considered the 757 because there's quite a few of them but the only reason why I'm kind of hesitant on this is because we also got to keep into consideration a new aircraft so can we actually order more of these fleet types and if we will look into this the production line for the 757 is actually shut so it's not there so we can't order more aircraft so eventually you'll run dry and as we said you want to keep the same fleet type as much as possible um, that's why I'm heavily considering the A330, A340 fleet type because you see you've also got A330, 800 Neo, 900, these are coming soon. Um, yeah, so I think I'll opt for the A330 family um, and, and go from there. Simply because there's plenty of them available on the used market and um, I can order more uh, new as well eventually once I get um, some capital, right? So we go to the used market. So this is now the next important step you should always and I mean always start with aircraft from the used market do not start ordering new aircraft from day one and I've seen so many new people new starters go like okay I'll order a new aircraft and then they have no cash and then they have to wait for you know typically two three months in the game well before they get their first aircraft by then most people are like way ahead and these guys are just lagging behind and just have to restart and they just completely miss the start so always always start with aircraft from the used market um things that you need to take into consideration you know is uh i typically always go for passenger aircraft first um 
This is because the way the mechanics work, like cargo aircraft, need a very high root image to be profitable. Uh, but once that root image is established, cargo is very profitable, trust me. Um, but initially I tend to start with passengers and if you're in a base that has cargo, eventually you can add cargo on routes that have existing root image or once you have the cash flow, you can then start to invest into, um, into the cargo element. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna go for A330, A340 family and I'll kind of show you what I'm considering as important to, um, to start up. I haven't done this. Well, I can actually filter by fleet group if I wanted to. That might be easier. So Airbus A330, A340. Here we go. That makes it nice and tidy. Now, some things to consider when you get an aircraft at the beginning. So, first of all, one thing I consider is the cost. So the cheaper your aircraft will be, generally, the actually the you know the more aircrafts you'll be able to get the cheaper the lease cost will be and the more profit you're likely to generate you should also consider the age of an aircraft the older the aircraft the higher the more maintenance is so it kind of offsets that but typically at this moment in time it doesn't really matter one thing that's quite important is um, the condition of the aircraft um, early on if the condition is typically below 75 or 80 percent your aircraft is going to need extra maintenance which means it's not going to be flying which means you're missing revenue and early on it's all about turning on revenue making money and growing as fast as you can so you need to find like a healthy balance in terms of um, cost of the aircraft versus the condition of the aircraft and also um, the next thing is we're looking at um, for example, let me just find one that might be just about right where I think this is a happy medium for me that I want to start with. I quite like the look of A330-200 here. Or, yeah, if, if you were to choose this one 60%, this is going to cause you immediately issues that you're going to have to fix this aircraft for a bit and it's all be grounded. It is cheap, but I still would, wouldn't recommend. I'm very tempted to go uh, purely, let's have a look at this 91% because this is just going to fly. Um, the next thing I want to check as well is how long do you have left till C and D checks? Now this one is perfect, right? So you get eight years to go till there's a D check, which means like you can maximize, that's the longest period you can get till a D check and a D check would cost nearly $5 million. A C check is nearly a full year and they're annual anyway so this is kind of the optimal one so what I'm going to do I'm going to lease this aircraft it says it's reasonable typically leasing long-haul aircraft is kind of a pet hate of mine I'm not very happy with that but at the start of the game you have to you've got no choice so I'm gonna go with eight years could have done seven and a half but that kind of brings down the cost so it's going to cost me monthly 1.5 million, so just under 400k a week. And I'm just going to accept a registration and confirm. And that means my first aircraft has been ordered. Now I can order another one, because in the beginning of the game you can order two. And then as the clock starts ticking, you can order another one. Uh, here we go. Let's just comment to my fleet because I've got fleet now so I should only bring A330 and A340s and which one shall I consider next um, I might choose an, another A330 that's A330 300x looks quite cheap now you'll notice at the beginning of the game world you can also not edit the configuration of the aircraft the first two aircrafts you get come in the configuration you get now you see this one I would not get because the sea check is due in four months uh, you know I want to keep my aircraft flying as much as possible early on in the game just to get that little edge over my competitors so let's have another look um, this one's quite expensive um, let's have a look have a look at this A330-200. So I'm not too bothered about the mixing of the thing as long as the same fleet have at this stage. Maybe later I can sort that out. Now this one is not too bad. Um, so I'm going to go for this one. And I'm going to lease up till 
D checks. At this stage of the game, I'm going to go with D checks. Sometimes in an earlier game, I could be tempted into going eight years plus D check because you might save tons of money. So I, this, let's just make it up, make it up, because this is the cost of a D check at six and a half million. So let's just do the maths, right? Um, so we're going to check how much would we pay for six years versus how much would we pay versus eight years. So for six years would be. 1.3 million, 1.3, and if we did add it 18, eight years on top of that, it would be 14 year lease. Yeah, that's quite a substantial saving. Okay, we're gonna have to take the D check hit, but you know, we're the cost of a D check maybe by the time it'll come will be about 7 million. But over the years, you know, we're gonna save approximately, you know, two to three million a year anyway in lease costs, so it might actually be worth just to go ahead and get that extra time in and just benefit from the extra savings because this way you know you spend less cash up front it means you can get more slots early on but you can also get more aircraft and aircraft and slots in the beginning of the game are crucial so we're gonna go ahead and order this um, we got two aircrafts on the way now so we got an Airbus A we got two Airbuses so we've got a 330-200 I didn't set the default thing there, but that doesn't matter. We can fix that later. That's if you got OCD or not. The next thing I would recommend is get familiar with the seven-day scheduling concept. Now, I'm going to make a separate video on this, on how to create routes efficiently on seven-day scheduling. Um, it's... It's a must, in my opinion, especially for long haul. Uh, you cannot get around it. You need to use that concept at all times. Uh, you can get away with it on medium haul, but just don't do it, I would say. Just stick to the long haul. Um, but it, I don't know. It, it all depends how busy you want to be, and it does have benefits. And short haul, like I say, you know, propeller planes, I would not bother. But, you know, anything that has routes up to that capacity of 1,500, 2,000 nautical miles, for me, I do seven-day scheduling. Um, now, the next thing you're going to do is make sure you set your default turnaround times. Um, so, how do we do that? So, I know from experience that aircraft settings you go to. The minimum turnaround time is 90 minutes. Now, never ever set this at minimum turnaround time. Now, the reason for that is because you're going to get huge delay. And when you get huge delays, it affects your company image. You're not going to see your company image grows, which means it impacts your ability to attract passengers to your airline. And clearly, we want to attract more passengers to our airline. Now, I know from experience that the default turnaround time should be 2 hours and 30 minutes for an Airbus. Airbus um, a330 because that means you get the one percent delay uh, when you start to create routes it shows you the delay um, how to so I set this as a default here you can also do this on the page where you create a route it literally you know you create a route and then step put down the the same time and then you can set it as a default from there but I typically set it here from the beginning I can also put here my naming convention so for all future aircrafts that I get, it will kind of sequentially go up. And that's kind of it where I'm going to start now saving it. So every route that I will create will automatically take into that consideration that turnaround time. Now, turnaround times are important. Um, obviously, in the leg, when it flies to your destination and back, it will take that into consideration, but also between flights. So if you say, let's say, you fly from, I don't know, New York to Atlanta for example and you fly at like 8 a.m. out and you land back at like 2 p.m. in New York your next flight has to depart with the same turnaround time in between you can't go to the minimum turnaround time because then your delays will go up again so you in the example of this a330 here you would have to if it lands at like a two o'clock back you would have to keep two and a half hours in between for the next one to depart so it'll be like 4 30 and that will be your next flight going to wherever you decide to go. So you always have to keep that into consideration. The only thing you don't have to keep into consideration that turnaround time is when you put in your maintenance check. That can just go at the minimum.
so bear that in mind so you can go you can tweak that a bit around there so next thing I think is quite important is more in the earlier games so not necessarily this one well in the earlier games you'll see is when you kind of going back to aircraft selection it's it's all about the pilots how many pilots uh, does an aircraft need now in this modern era most aircrafts will have two pilots so you won't but you'll see in the earlier earlier area the majority will have three and sometimes even four sometimes even five pilots now the cost of your country where you're based on employment is varies as well so certain countries will get away with it longer than other ones but typically if we start like say in the jet age era the the go-to plane is a dc-6b everybody will go for that but some people go for some constellations and you know you will see over time that some early constellations they have four pilots and people who are heavily gone for those will start to see that the staff costs kind of get out of control and if they don't manage that they'll go bust so you need to keep an eye on especially the long game modes how does the staff cost go up and kind of manage your pilot's cost because that's the driving factor as well now if you're especially in high cost countries like in Europe like Singapore um, you know Japan USA you know those are the countries where you need to get out quite quickly in terms of the higher pilot cost uh, other countries like China um, South Africa they might get away with it for longer uh, in terms of what kind of um, pilots they can fly how many pilots they can fly as well so same for, for Russia um, so the next one is you got to choose your initial routes carefully now this kind of brings me to the element of route image now when we started up earlier you saw that there was a list of most popular demand routes so let's go and go to the London Heathrow route so that's the most popular one um, so we're gonna fly to Europe and we're gonna have a look at the demand curve here so we just click here so, yeah you see just let's say 2,000 passengers now take into consideration when you start a new route at the beginning of a game your root image will be zero now if you start later in a the game there is a way of a boost where you get four routes which will have an incremental root image so to give you kind of a head start so you don't have to build this up but let's say you start from the beginning your root image is zero typically you will get between 10 and 15 percent of the demand allocated potentially to you so when we think about here 2,000 passengers per day you get about 10 to 15 percent of that root image factor to you so you'll get about 200 to 250 passengers maximum that could be coming to you from day one um, you'll get more as the root image goes up so it's important to uh, um, invest in root image which I'll come to later um, but you will literally have to spread your roots initially so you, you can't go and create like f four routes to to London Heathrow because early on that will mean that your load factors will just be you know ridiculously low you'll be running at a loss from day one and you'll, you'll, you'll eventually become profitable as your root image goes up but it will take you a while and you will be delayed versus your competitors so spread your routes out try and fly you know multiple destinations with high demand levels and that's kind of what you really are looking for is um, the higher demand routes okay everybody's going to be on it but you know if you're not on it somebody else will be so you might as well be on it too is my my opinion um, and kind of like but you know so if I look at here some of my competitors here you see like this guy is flying two triple uh, sevens on there already you know so he's he's taken I would say five six hundred passengers already on this route um, you know and that's kind of like a third of the demand so he's probably gonna get early on maybe load factors of about 35 40 percent not great um, so I would recommend starting with one and over time as your root image goes up start adding frequency because frequency is still very important in this game um, so that's kind of my advice in terms of um, what you change you manage your route so the next thing I mentioned about as well is marketing marketing so there's two types of marketing so first I'm going to go about um, 
the permanent marketing that affects your company image. So your company image kind of like is overall how it tends to grow. Uh, what you will notice is the more you spend early on, it does not accelerate your growth versus others. So you kind of want to incrementally in stages the way you go up in terms of how you spend your marketing. Um, and you add it at different stages throughout the game. So you, you're not overspending on your marketing versus your competitors. So you keep that cash to reinvest in terms of growth, in terms of slots, in terms of aircraft, and keep you know, keep pushing ahead, getting the aircraft on the used market. So that's, that's my advice here. So my tactic, which I'm gonna openly share, um, shared it with many of my friends in terms of marketing, I'm gonna set, set up a permanent marketing campaign, the first one. I typically have, eventually over time, quite a few. <clears throat> but you will see this is how I do it so I'm going to start with the lowest region and I select every single option except television and I make it permanent so this will cost me 42k per week start new campaign now what you will start to see is if I go to my company image we should start at 5 because it always starts 5 this will go up gradually over time so if you don't have delays if you don't have cancellations this will go up linearly. If you start to see delays and cancellations, it might start to lag a bit. Uh, but it will go up to about 30 or so. And when I start to see from the statistics page, if I start to lag behind, it means that it's time for more campaigns. So what I would do as my next campaign, I'm not going to do it now, but I would go replicate the same as this one. But instead of using my base city, I would add the next level. And it kind of as a, my company image or CI grows, I kind of go add more and more. Now, the one I tend to leave out is the whole world, because without the whole world, you should typically reach about 90, company image of 90. And that's where you should be at a good level, where you make good steady money, and you start to grow your airline more. And you, doesn't, you know, when you have to go to that 100 CI, it's only really when you're, you know, you're making tons of cash, you're not worried about it, so you're just pushing that extra edge. Uh, then you can go for the whole world, but for now, I would typically stop at 90 here. Um, another thing to consider is like, if you're just gonna run a small regional carri carrier with small propeller planes with like no business passenger, it is not imperative to push your company image high. You know, you can happily run a small airline with a company image of 30, and you know when you you just got to manage your costs so typically do not spend more than 10 percent of your a route income or your cargo income then on then 10 percent of that income you don't want to spend more than that on marketing costs because if you do you're not going to be profitable and you're overspending it so that's it for um, the company image now once you set up a route you can also push the route image now to do the route image it's same here uh, now because I haven't got a route set up so maybe I need to okay you can do a route specific campaign now I haven't created a route yet and I'm not going to do it until later um, you can then select the route pair that you've selected and then you can do the same um, but rather than a permanent campaign you have to select the duration now I typically will select the same parameters as here uh, everything except TV and push it for two or three months uh, per campaign per route so you'll see your route image goes up and eventually it will stop but that once your route image hits about 60 or so then I just let the rest go naturally up it goes up every week as you keep flying the route so I keep doing that as well but you know you want to give it a boost especially on routes where you know the demand is not that high and you're gonna have lower load factors you might want to give that initial boost early on um, later in the game you know I tend to kind of be lazy and forget about adding root image because the cash just generates anyway and it keeps flowing. Now, if you're going to start with cargo, it's important to know that I wouldn't advise to start with cargo because cargo only gets profitable when your root image gets to around 80 or 80 or above. And it takes quite a long time to get to that level. Um, simply, I would start with passengers, you know, build the root image and then once you have, you know, that root image, root image established to around 80 or above, you can then start thinking maybe do, does there is there a good amount of cargo uh, demand? And if there is, you might want to start thinking, hey, maybe I need to start looking at some uh, heavy cargo uh, addition to these routes. So that's 
that's kind of really it on on marketing so the two elements is like for company image always create permanent and kind of go up in stages do not overspend early on there's no point because everybody will go incremental at the same rate and for root images you kind of want to pick and choose your roots where you feel it's really necessary where you have low load factors early on due to root image now as your root image increases by all means then start adding the frequency on the roots as well because you'll you know it kind of unlocks more of that demand that's available so if you remember the Heathrow route it was 2,000 passengers you know as it goes up it will go up and more and more passengers that will kind of want to fly with your airline now it comes to the next thing the stage is like pricing now you can manage your pricing in various ways so the way I would do it once I have a route set up you can view the routes most profitable first but what you can do is um, it's, it's important here to mention that pricing is not like the real world there's no like elasticity here like if you're gonna lower the prices it doesn't mean that you're gonna get more passengers so this is kind of to preserve um, kind of the game dynamics to make sure people don't just you know the rich airlines just don't squeeze competitors out on price and that's kind of it's, it's in a way it's good um, but um, the way to typically run your airline I would say is early on I would rank my routes by load factors um, anything that hits 80% I will start to inc increase prices every week by like 5% uh, just purely because the demand is not filled you can maximize your profits and you can grow and grow your airline eventually after a year you might need to reset because you know your competitors are filling the route and they'll start eating your passengers away but also there's a default um, what we've discovered is um, you fly a default pricing plus uh, a single digit increase above it so typically I would not fly a default pricing I would fly a default pricing plus a single digit increase above that so I'm not going to tell you what that is but uh, you know it's a single digit increase versus what the pricing is and then you can go from there and that's a kind of a good benchmark to you know make a good margin on your airline and yes you'll see as time grows your margins will get squeezed because competition fuel will change and the likes and you know cost will increase and because the more routes you fly the more staff you need um, and you know more marketing everything everything goes up but you know hopefully your income goes up and your profit goes up too so in terms of when it comes to aircraft configurations as I mentioned earlier aircraft configuration the first two aircraft cannot be changed so there's no point even trying um, and also if you start to change it after the first day it will take three or four days for that aircraft to reconfigure so you lose that income so I would not touch the first aircraft that you receive just let them fly let them generate cash let me take over and go from there now typically I would recommend you keep flying default configuration aircrafts early on in the game and kind of get your desired configuration um, from new aircraft but there, there's some caveats to that so some airports like London Heathrow for example has tons of premium demand and as you grow your airline you want to tap into that pretty quickly um, so you'll want to start setting up some configurations and get them from the aircraft that you order on the used market after you order your second aircraft or the third aircraft will have the ability to select your default select the configuration that you want so if you have a lot of premium demand and your company image is starting to establish then you should really consider of flying a you know configuration that suits your needs for your routes for your demand um, it's worth noting though that you know first and business passengers are not going to come in from the beginning you need to have a bit of a company image established so it takes some time for that to to appear as well but you know especially from London Heathrow and some other you know critical basis it's worth considering what your configuration is being not just fly the default one so uh, but for most people the default one will be fine for this you know the first you know 15 20 aircraft and then over time you might want to see you know is there business or is there other demand um, because when you change a configuration it brings extra cost in and does that extra cost bring in the extra revenue early on or not you have to consider that if it doesn't you might as well not do it and you might be able to squeeze an extra aircraft in which at this stage might be more valuable at you at your for your airline 
So another topic, well, we're actually at topic 14 already. Uh, we're going fast in this half an hour so far. Um, is um, fuel hedges. So fuel hedges and contracts. So I get a lot of questions on the same thread. Um, what do I do with the fuel? Do I go for it? Do I not? Now, most game worlds early on, fuel tends to be quite steady. But when you see some game worlds, like here, in the modern era, I, I can see this spiking from day one. And not normally my instinct to do a hedge, but I'm going to do a fuel hedge here. Um, because simply it does not look like it will go down. Uh, it looks like the only way is up. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to fuel hedge from day one. Um, if you start earlier eras, you will see this is kind of flat and this is likely not going to increase. But this era, we're in 2015, this will likely spike. So I'm going to do a fuel hedge here. So 12 months, full amount. At least I know what I'm paying and it should be good. So I'm going to pay, you know, it's always an incremental to fix it. But if the price starts to jump, jump up, I will be fixed at that price. And it looks every likelihood that that price will jump. And every week this changes on a Tuesday. So we will see what that brings. Now, when it comes to um, supply contracts, there's two things I look at. Um, early on in the game, I find that I do not get the desired uh, contract that I want. So typically what I'm looking for is a contract that's at least four years. So you see there's none here. And also that's typically 8% or above. None of these are here. So I will just wait and I'll check you know, regularly because you know, these things update. Uh, with new offers and then eventually we'll see an offer that says four years or up to five years with like eight or nine percent and I don't really care about the cost early on uh, because as I'm a growing airline this will be offset anyway very very easily uh, this is a monthly fee as well so this would cost me 100k but as I said I'm looking for that eight or nine percent discount for at least four years because my airline is going to grow significantly in the, in the first four or five years so it's going to be a huge benefit for me to get that high discount for a long time that fixed in and at a relatively low cost compared to the income that I'm going to generate. So that's really it on fuel. Um, I just just wait and see really in terms of this one and after a couple of weeks I'm pretty sure I'll get the offer that I need. And my final piece of advice um, that I can give to anybody who's serious about playing this game is Join an alliance. Um, I'm telling you. So, I'm a member. Well, I'm a founding member of the A Team Alliance. I've been playing this game for a long time. So, I would advocate joining our alliance. But you know, there's there's some alliances who've been there for many years as well. And um, you know, it's fundamental if you want to learn from this thing. Is you learn from other people. Uh, most alliances they will have some sort of chat functionality. You know, beside this game, like from for ourselves, we have a Discord chat channel uh, where we actually have quite an active community of you know, aviation people, uh, non-aviation people like myself, just enthusiasts and people, you know, all around the world who just have a passion to play this game. And, you know, we have a daily chat and we learn from each other. You know, we provide advice, we have some tools and, you know, people who have been playing this game for many years, like myself, you know, we're always keen to, you know, train new people, help them, help them learn the game. And this is kind of purpose why I'm doing this video, but you tend to learn the most from other people. So and alliances will provide you that support. Other benefits that alliances have is like generally is like um, you get a small boost in terms of your load factor, but it's negligible. That's just kind of to offset the one, typically the one percent margin that you'll have to pay to be part of an alliance. But also um, you will see that sometimes airlines will help you in terms of aircraft orders, or you know typically there's a lot more uh, collaboration where that goes on in terms of it can help you to grow your airline further and faster, really and. You know, there's there's a lot more support to that way, and yes, that's that's really the advice I can give you. Join an alliance, and you will see, you will learn fast, and you'll grow, and you'll have a different gaming experience than just playing on your own. And just you know, you you might not get all the the best pieces of advice, or you might not discover everything that you need. So that's it really for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope these tips are useful. Um, just keep an eye out for more videos. Just don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Um, there'll be, you know, more tips that I will be 
sending out shortly and also keep an eye out for the seven day scheduling video that I mentioned earlier I will show you how I plan a seven day and how I create it to make sure that I, I optimize my scheduling and making sure that you know I get the most out of my aircraft so you want to keep the aircraft as, in the air as much as possible because that's when they make the money all right again thanks for watching and uh, talk to you soon